feel like so many people start writing their vows and stare at the page, so unsure of how to sum up the person in front of them. Lucky for me, I was in the position of having too much to say, which is very on brand. As I wrote, my head and heart started racing with more and more examples of why I love you and why you're the person I can't live without. It struck me pretty early on that I had so much to say because of who you are, larger than life in every sense. I have never met anyone who is more magnetic. Everywhere we go, people want to be around you. They want to be your friend, grab a beer with you, and most certainly share a dance floor with you. In every situation, you are proudly, enthusiastically yourself. After six years together, I've come to understand that loving you means sharing you with everyone else in this world who wants to feel even a little bit of your light, knowing that I am lucky enough to feel the glow of Brian Nestor's presence all the time. As I stand in front of you today, I'm filled with so many emotions and thoughts I want to express that I hope my words can come close to capture. I could talk about you forever, but instead I've narrowed it down to the three things I love the most about you. First, I'll never forget the way you made me feel on our very first date and have continued to make me feel every day since, like I'm the most important person in the room. I never believed the old cheesy saying that you can meet someone that makes time stand still, but with you, that's exactly what happened. The second thing I love most about you is your uncanny ability to bring out the absolute best in everyone around you. The third thing I love most about you is your sense of dedication, whether it be family, friends, or work, even if the latter comes at my expense with you waking me up with breaking news at 3 a.m. telling me Ginny and Georgia was renewed for another season, or that the new cast of Bachelor in Paradise was just released, and this season is going to be absolutely dreadful to watch. I love your dedication to making everyone laugh, and today I'll say it just this once, you're the funniest person I know. <laughs> once. Once. Are you excited? Yeah, you ready? I'm so ready. That's gonna be awesome. We never practiced our dance again, also. I know. I know. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be, good. It's gonna be great, though. I'm excited. That's gonna be awesome. So much fun. Yeah. Oh, so no, me too. I want to give you a picture, though, of Brian as a young lad. He had this sort of floppy bowl cut, and he would sort of walk across the street, or rather trot, and go like this with his head. Knock on my door, it's Tom home, we play. He was terrified of neighbor's dog, Talia, who was quite frankly the least intimidating dog, as she was both deaf and blind. <laughs> And then my personal favorite, he would zip around the neighborhood on this little yellow mini motorcycle, the crotch rocket, thinking he was all cool, exuding a confidence, frankly, too, far too bold for someone with a bull cut. Being lifelong friends, we've gotten to see her graduate from her starring role as Horton in the middle school play. <laughs> <laughs> to winning the class clown superlative our senior year of high school to now crushing adulthood at her jobs at The View and New York 27 Productions. <laughs> We've been through so many firsts. First sleepovers, first pets, first crushes. But of all the firsts we've shared with Molly, we feel the most fortunate to be by her side for this one. The first day of the rest of her life as Molly Nestor. The night they met, we actually all had plans together, as Colin mentioned, which Molly promised to join later after her date with a, quote, random hinge guy. Only Molly never showed up. Instead of meeting up with us, she and Molly extended their dinner date into an all-night bar crawl through Fidei. They didn't know it then, but that night marked the beginning of the rest of their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, families and friends, today we celebrate the marriage of Molly and Brian. I have the distinct pleasure of watching this relationship develop from its early days into the love that it is today. And it's been a joy to watch these two amazing individuals grow together and in their relationship.
the happy couple. The perfect couple. Each with a very distinct sense of self. They never try to change each other. And they never try to change for each other. They are not a couple who takes their love and hides it away. They shine it and they radiate it on all of us, as they will on anyone else who comes along to join their story. We would be remiss not to give some more airtime to Molly and Brian's famous bits, the repeat jokes and antics that make their relationship so unique. Like how during Molly's bachelorette party, she walked around all weekend holding a tiny mic and interviewing strangers at the bar as if she was the host of her very own podcast. Or Brian, who took every opportunity the entire year prior to the engagement to tell anyone who would listen. Bartenders, loose acquaintances, strangers on the street, pretty much every human except for Molly, how excited he was to propose on Thanksgiving Eve at Campo Beach. As a duo, one of their favorite ongoing bits, referenced in their wedding vows, is a heated competition about who is funnier. Tonight, we thought we might settle the debate once and for all. After years of deliberation, and because we may have our Maid of Honors titles revoked if we publicly embarrass Molly, we've come to the conclusion that while they are equally funny individuals, the sum is much greater than the parts. I love your ability to keep your sense of humor in any situation, regardless of how dark, even though you think you're funnier than me, despite how obviously wrong that is. Your dedication to being there for your family and friends and following through on plans that everyone knows that you're someone to rely upon. On a final note, I used to love playing golf with my grandfather. And later in life, the conversations during our rounds transitioned from, hey, you know the green's in the other direction, right? To more serious things, like finding someone you can spend the rest of your life with. When I asked him what it took to be married for so many years, he told me one thing. It's easy to picture your future life with someone, but that's not what it's about. It's about finding the person you simply can't live without. And right here, right now, and forever, I can wholeheartedly say that I truly can't picture my life without you. Even when you go to bed with sopping wet hair and wake up looking like a hungover version of Albert Einstein. <laughs> because waking up next to you is something I will never get tired of. For all the best reasons, you have made me who I am. I love you so much, Molly Catherine. I know that I'm going to love you for the rest of my life, but I also promise to never stop showing you how much I like you too. So without further ado, here are a few more promises. I vow to always make the long walk back with you to the bar to get your credit card and you inevitably leave your tab open. I promise to recognize the magic of a 70 degree Saturday in October knowing you're going to play 18 holes. I promise to never take the best bite of your food, especially after I've said I don't want anything, though I cannot promise I won't ask for a taste. I vow to find you on every dance floor if sugar were going down, gimme, 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 or any Blink-182 song comes on until we are old and gray. I vow to wear a poncho and sit in the rain at a Jets game and maybe even join in on a sad J-E-T-S chant when they somehow blow a 14-point lead in the fourth quarter. As we begin the next chapter today, there is no one on earth better suited for me and no one else I would want to do this with. You are my best friend, my better half, my missing piece, and now my husband. Through it all, Brian, 